Hi, my name is Mary Stern. I'm a physiotherapist in North Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm here to talk about chronic pain. Chronic pain is huge. I have been in chronic pain. I've overcome it. I treat people in my practice with chronic pain. I want to give you some very crystal clear advice on some steps that you can take to get out of the quicksand of chronic pain that you can use quickly, effectively to start your journey or to boost your journey of overcoming that cycle of chronic pain. So here we go. The first step, do not share your pain, your journey, your feelings about your pain with people that you do not trust, with people whose unsolicited advice is not going to serve you. It is, and shout out to Brene Brown because I love how she articulates this. You, it is an honor to empathize with you on your journey and to hear your story. And if somebody is mirroring back to you something that feels like it is not helping you on your journey, I'm not saying to cut these people out of your lives, but share less with them. And if they're not okay with that, using words that are clear but not unkind can be helpful. So we can talk more about that, um, how to articulate what it is that we need when we're in pain. But I want to make it very clear that not, not everybody can, can hear. Not everybody can listen. Some people want to solve. Some people have judgments. Some people project their own experience onto you and it's not going to serve you. And often that's something that people come into my office with, into my clinic with after having experienced months of this. And it's hard to peel back the, the onion layers of frustration. The second thing that I want you to think about doing if you haven't already is have an awareness of your body, have a mindfulness practice. And I know this might be something that you've heard before and then just feels overwhelming. How do you expect me to meditate when the moment I close my eyes and take a moment to scan my body, all I feel is pain. So I'm not saying meditation. For some people, meditation is not going to work well, but maybe yoga is or maybe dancing is or maybe going out on the boat and being in the water is but there's a practice where your nervous system can relax where your breath can regulate where you can be in the moment with your body your mind your soul and feel a little bit less in this fight or flight zone so find that practice but don't take on someone else's practice don't feel like you have to try them on, but sit with yourself a moment and think about what, what would be something that might bring you joy. And again, a mindfulness practice. Uh, for me, it was 10 days of Vipassana meditation that kind of just knocked the sense into me. And it was a painful process um, because sitting for 10 hours a day and finding this sensory awareness of your body as you're trying to stay in the moment and observe your breath I tell you, <laughs> it is an incredible challenge, um, but the beauty that comes out of that discomfort is life-changing. So if you have any questions to me about Vipassana, it's a nonprofit all over the world. I would love, love, love to share because to me, it is the one most life-changing thing um, and inspiration that I have had to understand that connection of body, 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 mind, soul that is absolutely supported by physiological research. And I don't want to digress, so I'm going to get on to the third point. Um, so the, the third thing that I would say to you, if you're coming to me with chronic pain and you're just saying, just give me a few things, give me a bridge. I need something. The third thing is find safe movement. Uh, so if you don't already, if that's not already a part of your mindfulness practice, you have to move more now before you throw spears at me. Um, obviously there's precautions. So maybe you're post-surgical, maybe you've had a neurological consult and something is not quite right. So you don't want to move too much, but there's always a safe movement. And sometimes that safe movement in that moment is just breath and breath is movement. There is an excursion of your rib cage. There's a movement of your diaphragm. There's natural pressures that get your abdomen to come in and out. Breath is movement. 
do not be mistaken. But if it's a movement, if you're rigid, if you're holding your body so stiff, you're in fight or flight, you're in a state of possible inflammation, you're not able to heal and not able to deprogram, not able to fall asleep at night. Movement, as tacky as it sounds, motion is lotion and it is so, so necessary to start to heal. The next one, um, and maybe this will be the last one that I share in this video, is understand the fundamental lesson. I'm going to say this really slowly because I, I have not rehearsed it. It's unscripted. But understand the fundamental truth of life that we are in constant change. Why is that so important? Because we can be reprogrammed. Now, I'm, I know this sounds woo-woo. I don't mean it in this way. Our bodies are in a constant state of cellular regeneration. Let the, go to, we'll go to MedPub and look at the research. This is just Western science. However, we need the inputs, and this is where neuroplasticity comes into play. We need the inputs we need the novel movement that's a different movement than we've been doing. We need um, different cues to our brain to correct error messages. So whether that is, you know, maybe you're a patient who has experienced dizziness for a long time and you're like, oh God, I know about neuroplasticity because I've done all the exercises that make you dizzier and I hate it. Well, we know that this, this process of changing your body is not always a comfortable one, but this is where you need someone that you trust um, and you need to have someone who you trust enough, who's empathized with you, who's that person. And going back to the beginning of what I said, that person that you do feel safe to talk to. And once you do trust to them, let them be your guide. So it's not your story and your fears. And maybe if you're not a physiotherapy yourself or a medical professional yourself, you don't have the full, full picture. So have someone you can trust to be not just your, your guide, but your cheerleader, um, your sounding board, and understand that your body is constantly in change. But, big but, we need to write a new story. So, these are the things that if you're if you've tuned in because you're in you're in pain and you're looking for a bridge or you're looking for something that's going to help you break through, um, you're looking for maybe just even a moment of understanding to feel like this person gets it. I want you to know that I think you're brave. I think that you have an incredible intelligence of your own body, your own experience physically, emotionally, and that that should be harnessed in your therapy. That absolutely has to be a huge part of how you get better and has to be capitalized upon when you're working with your therapist, when you're working with your team, and if you're not being listened to, then you need to cut that person out. Um, again, you know, there are subtle differences um, in terms of how you can communicate that or how you can communicate your needs that if you have any questions or if you're going through something and you want a sounding board for that, I'm really happy to discuss because often I think therapists need a little bit of, um, a little bit of direction on how to do this. There are a lot of really, really good therapists who do, however. Um, so please try these things. Please reach out. Please know that you're not alone. Please know that, you know, some of the feedback that I have received from patients that have overcome pain is it has been this pivotal point in their lives where knowing what it is they really truly need to be whole and to have healed, having missed that prior, now they have a, a new sense of direction, a new sense of empowerment. And yes, it is an uphill battle in the beginning, but once you get there, once you are at the summit, um, again, I'm, you have to forgive me, I am full of cheesy metaphors all of the time. They just, they just love to flow like a river out of my mouth, but once you add that summit after that climb, what you can see is, is often so much more, so much more vast.
So I want to send this message to you of hope. Um, and if there is something else that you would like me to talk about within the realm of physiotherapy and pain, you have any questions, I have just started reaching out to this community as a physiotherapy for me to be the most authentic therapist that I can and reach people that I can with my message of self-empowerment, but also understanding the intricacies of how the body, mind, emotional community has to work to empower you. Um, I would love to know what it is that you would like to hear and learn more about. So please reach out to me. And if you'd like to connect again, you can like her or I was going to say prescribe. <laughs> prescribe if you're a medical professional. Like or um, subscribe. And uh, I will see you soon. Thank you.